Ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome Lieutenant Colonel Jason Williams. Colonel Palmer, thank you for that introduction. Uh, sometimes it's hard to believe that I'm old enough for all those things to have happened. Um, I tell Shelly from time to time, you know, I feel like I could still be at North Georgia and she'll always keep me grounded and say something like, well, you could as a professor. And, so, you know, this morning we were running and I thought the same thing. My knees felt like, well, I don't know, maybe I couldn't still be at North Georgia. But Dr. Jacobs, Colonel Palmer, Colonel Cummins, general officers, distinguished visitors, Corps cadets, and most importantly, uh, the Gold Star families and the families of those students who passed away that while they were students here. Thank you very much for inviting me to be back here as your guest speaker. Truth be told, standing here, I'm not sure I'm worthy of the task, but I promise I'm gonna do my best to honor the legacy of the Corps and represent the alumni to the best of my ability. Dr. Jacobs, I meant to tell you this earlier uh, when we were inside and then I decided I'd wait. I wanted to thank you for the letter you sent me recently when I was selected for brigade command. I had, uh, I had not received a letter from the university president um, since I had been notified of being on academic probation um, all those years ago. Uh, I'm actually kidding about that. I think Dean Heim sent me those letters. But uh, <laughs> anyway, thank you very much, sincerely. I, over the years, I've received letters from, um, from superiors when, uh, when I've been promoted or selected for command, but to receive one from the president of my university um, was truly special. Shelley and I remain committed to the Corps and to the University. I would like to welcome the families of those who whose names of the students whose names are being added to the wall that honors those who have fallen, who have passed away while they were here at school. I know well uh, the, the impact that the passing of a student can have on the student body. Um, a few weeks before I was a frog, uh, Chad Alessio passed away, and throughout my time while I was here in the Corps, his memory surrounded the Corps of Cadets. Chad was a, a member of the Colombo class of 1997, and a lot of times the bonds of camaraderie that exist in the cadet volunteer organizations are always tight, I mean, really uh, tight, but it, perhaps never more so than in Chad's Colombo class. Over the years I was here, Chad's friends became my friends, and it was ultimately the influence of his friends and the death of another student, Nick Barina, that inspired me uh, to overcome my fears and go out for Colombo as a junior. Chad's Colombo class was exceptional. Chad's Colombo class has gone on to lead ex exceptional lives, both in and out of uniform. I trust that in time, you will find that your student's legacy is similar. I'd also like to welcome the Lee family. I know with the recent passing of Weston's father and here now seeing Weston's name on the wall that your heart must be heavy. We are honored by your presence and I am humbled by your strength and fortitude. I'd like to ask all of the Gold Star families and the families of our uh, fallen students to please stand so we may recognize you and honor your presence. Please join me in a round of applause. Thank you very much for being here. The, uh, this ceremony is always special, but it's always made even more powerful by your presence. The first time I came here was in the fall during Frog Week of 1994. It was it's a part of the ceremony that Colonel Palmer talked about earlier. Our cadre had taken us around to the uh, other places on campus of significance, such as the Arch and the Scabbard and Blade Triangle. And when we got here that night, Colonel Chamberlain was standing here, and he was standing next to the Vietnam panel. Colonel Chamberlain is a graduate of the class of 1968, and when I was a frog, and when, the entire time I was a cadet, he was the professor of military science. That night when we got here, Colonel Chamberlain talked about the wall and its significance. He talked about the Vietnam marker and the seven classmates whose names appear on there to include his friend, Bob Phillips. Robert Bob Phillips, while, while a cadet, was a Sigma Theta. He was in the band, he was a distinguished military student. He was in the scabbard and blade, and as a senior, he was the brigade commander. Colonel Chamberlain and Bob Phillips had known each other in high school, came here to North Georgia together, 
graduated together, went to ranger school together as ranger buddies, and after ranger school, went on to Vietnam. Bob Phillips was killed on the 6th of May, 1970, while serving as a, com as a company commander. That day, Bob Phillips' company was conducting a reconnaissance, an air assault reconnaissance into an area they had not previously been. When the first platoon landed, they discovered that they were immediately surrounded by the North Vietnamese. An order was given from a higher headquarters to not land any more aircraft on the LZ until the platoon that was on the ground could get control of the situation and resecure the LZ. Bob Phillips selflessly influenced and encouraged and was able to get the pilot of his aircraft to land so that he could get out and join with his platoon. Once on the ground, Bob Phillips took charge of the situation and led his men to gain fire superiority and regain security of the landing zone. Late in the day, while laying smoke to bring in a medevac, Bob Phillips was killed by a sniper. Bob was possibly promoted to captain, and he was awarded the Silver Star for gallantry. That night in 1994, when we were sitting here listening to Colonel Chamberlain, Vietnam was a distant war. It was the war that my dad and the dads of my friends had served in. Listening to Colonel Chamberlain that night didn't really change that, but it did make it serve as the catalyst for me as I was trying to come to grips with the reality of the life that I had chosen. It was six years or several years later after I graduated and had my own combat experiences that I came to learn the soldier never forgets three things. He never forgets the first time he's in combat with the enemy. He never forgets the first time he is nearly killed, and he never forgets when one of his friends is killed in action. It was for me, and those, for me, all those things happened over the course of about six weeks in Iraq in 2006. And it was in those days that I was able to uh, begin to appreciate what it was, what, what serving in Vietnam had meant to Colonel Chamberlain and what it was he had been talking to us about that night in 1994. When I was a cadet, we all idolized Colonel Chamberlain. We all wanted to somehow be like him. He made us want to be better every day, listening to him in class, seeing him around, seeing him lead by example. But it was after my own combat experiences that I realized Colonel Chamberlain is who he is, in part, because of Bob Phillips. And in that way, Bob Phillips never really died because Bob Phillips lives in the heart of those who loved him, and he continues to live even now, 50 years later, in the lives of the guys like me who his friends influenced. For the last 17 years, my generation and now yours has been at war in Afghanistan and Iraq. And in that time, North Georgia has had eight alumni give the ultimate sacrifice. And I have known two of them. Jeremy Chandler was a, was a sophomore when I was a freshman. Jeremy was, in, was not in my company, but he was friends with some other sophomores who were in my company. Um, and this group of guys were, they had this in, really incredible ability to where they led by example without any form of phony bravado and just through their own character and personal example. And it was in that context that I came to know Jeremy. Jeremy, as a cadet, was a Sigma Nu and he was in Ranger Challenge. And when I think back on it now, and I think about all of us when we were cadets and how all the guys and so many of us to include myself, were all you know here trying to figure out who we are and what we wanted to be. And when I think about it, Jeremy wasn't like that. Jeremy knew who he was and he knew he wanted to be. Even in college, Jeremy was a quiet professional. Through his everyday actions, through his leadership by example, through his quiet professionalism, he led others to be their very best. He trained other leaders. Over our time in school, Jeremy and I became friends, and I was not surprised when in 1997, when he commissioned, he branched infantry and went on to the 101st. Later on, Jeremy went to SFAS, ultimately joining 3rd Special Forces Group. Throughout Jeremy's time on active duty, he lived up to his North Georgia heritage, and he continued to lead by example. Jeremy earned the Ranger tab, the Special Forces tab, the Master Parachutist Badge, the Master Military Freefall or Master Halo Badge, the Combat Infantry Badge, and the Bronze Star for Valor. Jeremy was killed in a training accident near Tarankot, Afghanistan in 2005 while serving there for the third time. Jeremy's legacy continues here at North Georgia in a scholarship that bears his name. Each year, 
um, for the last few years while my family and I have been um, stationed in D.C. We go to uh, we go to Arlington in late recent Christmas, and uh, this past year, if you've never been to the cemetery to Lay Reese, you should go. And uh, in Arlington, there's tens of thousands of people up there laying wreaths, and uh, it's hit or miss if you'll get a chance to lay the wreath at, uh, at the grave of one of your friends. But this past year, one of our daughters was able to lay the wreath at Jeremy's grave. It was a special day for her. It was a special day for my family. Jeremy lives forever in the hearts of the guys who went to school with him and in the lives of the soldiers that we've led. Kevin Jennerette was a senior when I was a freshman. I didn't know Kevin as well as I knew Jeremy because he was a senior. Um, but because of his uh, sort of larger than life and, dare I say, legendary presence on campus, we all knew who he was. And we all wanted to somehow become like him and my company commander, Tom Bo Jones. As a cadet, Kevin was in the aggressors. He was a Sigma Chi. And as a senior, he was the Delta Company commander. As a cadet, even as a cadet, Kid Evan was larger than life, tough as nails, and none of us were surprised when he branched infantry and after graduating from North Georgia, went on to graduate from Ranger School. In fact, a few years later, Kevin became an instructor here at the mountain phase of Ranger School, and there's a monument um, up there that, that honors all the Ranger instructors who died in combat, and, and he's, his name is there. Truth be told, it was Kevin and the guys like Kevin who made me want to go to Ranger School. And like a lot of people, I got to go to Ranger School more than once. The uh, <laughs> It's okay to laugh at that. That's pretty funny. Uh, the first time I went was only a few days removed from returning home from the invasion of Iraq. My Ranger School adventure ended early that year in 2003. And shortly thereafter, Shelley and I started our family, and it just became more and more difficult to get back. Uh, in fact, as the years went on, I thought I might never get back. And then finally, um, nine years later, in fact, Shelley told me it was six years ago today, um, I had the opportunity to go back to Ranger School. And this time at 36 years old, I went straight through. It was uh, the entire time I was in the course, it was thinking about guys like Kevin and the guys and so many other Rangers in my life, many of which I knew here from school, that served as motivation for me um, while I was going through the course. Kevin died alongside, alongside two other soldiers near Kapisa, Afghanistan, when, a, when an IED hit their vehicle in June of 2009. Like Jeremy, Kevin is memorialized here at school in a scholarship that bears his name. And like Bob Phillips and Jeremy, Kevin lives forever in the hearts of his friends like Tom Bo Jones and, and in the lives of guys like me who are influenced by his friends. A little over a year ago, Correction, a little less than a year ago, Shelly and I had the opportunity to go to the Weston Lee's funeral. I did not know Weston, but after talking to his friends, know that Weston came from a good family where he was taught self-discipline, empathy, respect, and responsibility. Weston came here to North Georgia with, uh, with no military, prior military training, and yet during Frog Week, he was named as the guide on bearer for his company. To come to school and in Frog Week, be named the guide on bearer for your company with no prior military training speaks volume to the character instilled in him by you and Mr. Lee. After Frog Week, Weston joined the combat shooting team, one of only two freshmen to be on the team. Weston played rugby. Weston was in the SGA. Weston was in SAE. And as a senior, he served as a pre-camp TAC where he had the opportunity to train and mentor and coach the class of 2015. More importantly, Weston was strong in his Christian faith, and Weston, through his daily walk and testimony, influenced his friends to lead lives of faith as well. Weston was killed in Mosul, Iraq, almost a year ago. In fact, April 29th, which is just a little over a week from now. Uh, it'd be one year. Weston, like Jeremy, is laid to rest in Section 60 at Arlington Cemetery. Last year, after my daughter laid the wreath at Jeremy's grave, we walked across Section 60 to visit Weston. 
when we got there, a wreath had already been laid, but there was a young lady there with her friend. And the young lady was wearing a First of the 325 Red Falcons t-shirt. Weston had been a platoon leader in First of the 325 when he was killed. I asked her if she knew Weston and she said no, but that her husband had been in his platoon and he loved him. And because her husband had loved and respected him so much, she wanted to visit his grave. Love and respect like that, that tells you what kind of character, what kind of leader Weston was. Like Kevin and Jeremy, Weston lives forever here at North Georgia in a scholarship that bears his name. And Weston lives in the hearts of a lot of people who loved him, a lot of who were, he, who were here. And he'll live in the lives of the people who you lead when you leave school. So here we are. What does it all mean? As a North Georgia cadet, and as later when you graduate, the expectations of you will be higher than that of other people from other schools. People like Bob Phillips, Jeremy Chandler, Kevin Jennerett, and Weston Lee submitted that legacy long before you ever arrived. When you get to your first unit, you will be expected to be professional, mentally and physically tough, and to be an expert in small unit leadership. The specifics of your branch and the specifics of your job you will learn in time, but professionalism, toughness, and small unit leadership will be expected upon arrival. While you're here at North Georgia, you will learn those skills, but to become an expert in it requires repetition and tough and realistic environments. Colonel Chamberlain's generation used those skills in Vietnam. Graduates from the 70s and the 80s used those skills in a place called the Folda Gap in a desert storm. My generation used them in the Balkans, Afghanistan, and Iraq. The same will be true for you. If you are not already a member of Colombo, the Aggressors, or Ranger Challenge, I recommend that this summer you do some reflection and consider next year trying out for one of those units. If you will be a senior next year, I recommend you consider volunteering to be a pre-camp TAC as a way of honing your leadership skills as you teach them to others. To be sure, living up to your North Georgia heritage, living up to the legacy is a challenge. It is something that even now, 20 years later, drives me every single day. I pray the same will be true for you. Thousands of graduates who stood in that formation, some of whose names are now on this wall, and the soldiers who you will prepare and lead in combat deserve nothing less. Thank you so very much for letting me be here today. It's been an honor beyond description. It means more to me than you'll ever know. Thank you.